Welcome to my lesson on equilibrium. Uh, the first thing is a definition of equilibrium. Uh, you can see that the equa uh, reminds you of the word equal. Uh, an object in a, is in a state of equilibrium when the forces on it are, I would say, balanced would be a good answer. And uh, other ways you can say that the forces are balanced, and I think we remember this, is you could say F net is equal to zero. You could also say the acceleration is equal to zero. You can also use the words constant velocity. So it's definitely something that we've seen many times. It's just we're giving you a word uh, equilibrium for this situation. Which of these two objects are in a state of equilibrium? Check it out. Make your choice. And yeah, it's a bit of a trick question. The answer is both of them are in a state of equilibrium. Uh, you'll notice that this 30 cancels out and these two 50s cancel out and so on with the other one. Take a look at number two. It says select the right answer or answers. An object at equilibrium is either A, at rest or staying and staying at rest, or B, in motion and continuing in motion with the same speed and direction. And your answer is yes, again, it's both of them. So as long as it has a constant velocity, it could be zero or it could be in motion. Well, if we take a look at this first one, when it's at rest and staying at rest, that is a special case of equilibrium. Uh, if it's in a state of rest, we're going to say it is in a state of static equilibrium. Here I've drawn a quick little Venn diagram saying that uh, static equilibrium is a special case of equilibrium. So things that are at rest and staying at rest are in static equilibrium and they are part of things that are in equilibrium. Okay, so moving on to our examples here. Here's one that says show that this object is in equilibrium. And we've got a bunch of numbers here as well to show the magnitude and the direction. I'm not going to get too caught up in the, the directions right now, but I'm just going to say, uh, notice how the direction, we starting from uh, the x-axis, the, the positive x-axis, and the way that we do direction is rotating from that one. So you'll notice that B is about 70 degrees. A is all the way over to 161 degrees. So that's just the first thing I'm going to take a look at, just the way that degrees are mentioned in this one. But how could we show that this is in static equilibrium? It's a bit more complicated than, than these examples up here, right? Because these ones, they've already got them all lined up in terms of the x's and the y's. So what we could do is make example number one look a little bit more like those previous ones. It, instead of drawing B, we could replace B with the x component of B, Bx, and the y component of b. So the y component of b we could draw here and it's because that's nicely in the triangle and it's easy to do our trig that way but we could also draw the y component of b this direction. Okay so we would look at that bx and that by and maybe I'll choose a different color looking over at a we would be that I guess this would be ax getting over top my my lettering there this would be ay or instead of drawing it there, I could draw it from the object and move it up like this one. That would be a y. And c is actually kind of easy because it's already lined up. So if I were to, to, to show you that uh, those two would be equal, well, what would I be saying? I would say that uh, this line would have to be equal to that one. So in other words, uh, ax would be equal in size to bx, just opposite direction. Or I guess another way I could say it is if I added those two together, I would get zero because those are all the x components. Uh, all the y components would be ay plus by plus c because that is downwards would also have to be zero. In other words, if I looked at the length of that arrow and the length of that arrow and added the two together, it would be equal to the c downwards. That's how I could show that this object is in equilibrium. If I went through all the work at, at calculating all those numbers, and I'm not going to do that right now, it's just a quick example. All right, here's an uh, example number two. It says calculate the weight of this sign, and uh, it has two tension forces on there. So first of all, I'm going to mention instead of writing F tense like that, 
I'm going to write capital T for my tension force. Just that's, that's the way I like to draw them. So you can do them either way. So I'll, I'll just be using those T. And I'm going to kind of redo this diagram. And I'm going to say, okay, here is my object. I'll just make it smaller. So here is one of my tension forces. And I will call it T1. Here's another one of my tension forces. I will call that one T2. And of course I have an angle here and an angle there and it's 30 degrees. Uh, is there a force that we're missing? Well, it says calculate the weight of the sign. What is weight? Weight is actually the force of gravity, right? So that is another force that we're going to draw. So that's the downwards force, the force of gravity. Okay, so just like in our previous example, uh, I'm going to like I did over here, instead of looking at the original lines, I'm going to look at the x component and the y component. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to replace t this t1 here with the x component t1x maybe, and the y component t1y. So when I I think about this diagram, I'm going to just erase t1 and I'll have t1x and up here I'll have t1y. Similarly I'll be replacing this one. Oh, I'm missing some of my diagram and I'll have I guess this is t2x and t2y. Okay now when I'm looking at my diagram a couple things are going to be clear. Um, well this is lesson is about equilibrium is this sign in equilibrium? And I, th I think that when I have see a sign that's hanging on the wall, held up by two wires with tension in it, it is definitely a case of static equilibrium. It's not moving, and all the forces are going to add up to zero. In other words, this x component to the right and that x component to the left are going to be equal. Now, these two tension forces upwards are going to be canceling out the force of gravity downwards. So if I can figure out what this tension 1 upwards is, this question mark here, then I'm going to say that the T1y plus my T2y uh, upwards is going to be equal to my force of gravity downwards. And since T1 and T2 are identical, really what I just need to do is find that tension force and then multiply times 2 and I'll get my force of gravity. Okay, so here is the tension force here. This one is 50, so I'll put a 50 there. And my angle is 30 degrees. So it's time to get some trig out. I'm going to say that the sine of 30 degrees is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. I'll multiply both sides by 50, so I'm going to say T1y is going to be equal to 50 times the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees it happens to be a half, so 50 times 0.5 would be 25 newtons. So in other words, this is 25 newtons. This is 25 newtons. And because in this example it's identical, it's just in the other direction. All the numbers are the same. So this is also going to be equal to 25 newtons. So if all the forces are going to cancel each other out, this force of gravity downwards is going to be 50 newtons. What is the weight of the sine? 50 newtons. Remember, weight is the force of gravity. Okay, next question. It says, calculate the tension in each cable. Uh, there's not enough information, so we're going to just make up a number here. Let's going to say that the mass of this cable, maybe, of, of the sign here, this sign here is going to be, how about we'll call it 10 kilograms, all right? So uh, what do we have for, for forces? Well, I'll just redraw my, my diagram. I'm going to have this tension force number one. I'll have this tension force number two, and I will have a force of gravity downwards. So the force of gravity is the easiest one to figure out. It's going to be my mass times my 9.8. So I will get 10 times 9.8, so it will be 98 newtons. So right away I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to take my T1 and my T2, and just like before, I'm going to replace it with uh, the X component, T1X, and T1Y. 
uh, over here, I'm going to replace this with t2x and t2y. So a few things I'm going to notice is that these two are going to cancel each other out because this eat at ed sign is is definitely in static equilibrium. In other words, it's not accelerating anywhere. It stays at rest. Uh, and this, if this is 98 newtons and these two are, again, they're identical, these two angles are going to be the same. So in other words, each one of these is going to be equal to half of 98, which is 49 newtons. Now, we're not quite done because we're not asked to find what is the y component of the, or what is the, the y component. We're asked to find what's the tension. So if I go back and think about the, that diagram here, here is T1. There's the x, and there's the y of 49 newtons. And we know, well, what's the angle in there? Let's think. If, if this part is 100, and the whole thing is 180 degrees, then these two are going to be 40 degrees, right? 40 plus 100 plus 40 is going to be 180 degrees. So this is going to be 40 degrees right here. Now, again, I bring up my trig. I'm going to say that the sine of 40 degrees is equal to 49 divided by that tension force. Um, the easiest way to kind of solve this is to think, okay, I'm going to sort of switch those two so that I will get T1 is equal to 49 divided by the sine of 40 degrees, which um, I think is something like 76 Newtons. And that would be my answer. Okay, let's take a look at the next one here. It says, how does uh, the angle affect the tension? Now, I think this question is very similar to, maybe even is identical in the worksheet you're going to be doing later. So I'm going to look at just the, the first one, and I'll get you to fill up the next two as part of your week, worksheet. So um, it says here that if this is the tension, I guess that would be this cable here is this one here. So in other words, this is 15 degrees, and that's why that's 15 degrees. Um, clearly, in all of them, the force of gravity downwards is 10 newtons. How did I figure that out? Because if the upwards force of that tension force, in other words, if this ty is equal to 5, this pulls up with 5, that pulls up with 5. For it to be in static equilibrium, the downwards force, which is the force of gravity in this case, must be 10 newtons. Okay, so how would I figure out this tension force? Well, again, I'm going to say that the, the sine of 15 degrees is equal to the opposite, which is 5, divided by that tension force. So to solve for tension, I'm going to get tension is equal to 5 divided by the sine of 15 degrees. So in this case, this is going to be equal to 19.3 newtons. So I'm going to put 19.3 newtons right here. And I'll leave you to solve for the 45 and the 60 degrees. Really, all you got to do is change this number and, and redo the math. And check out the trend. As you change the angle, what happens to the tension force? It will be a good guideline for the next time that you are asked to hang a picture and are thinking about how the wire should sit. Okay, so we've got a your turn here. You know what I think I'm going to do? I will incorporate this as part of your classroom work. I'm just going to say the answer for this one that I got, and I hope I got it right, is 42.4 newtons, so you can give that a shot. Uh, the answer for this one, when I calculated it, was 800 or 980 newtons, so you can try that one out. And this last one I got, 56.6 uh, newtons. Okay, so it's a fairly short video. It's uh, 15 minutes long. The, when you come back to class, we'll be working on this worksheet, and here's the mop to do. So thank you, and uh, see you in class.